What's up guys, it's Josh. Today we're going to demonstrate how to configure and manage file sharing, how to configure a DFS namespace, and how to configure DFS replication. To begin with configuring and managing file sharing, the first thing we're going to do is create a folder on the C drive on the odd number computer, and this folder is going to be called folder 01, and we're going to share this folder. We're going to click share, type in the credentials of the administrator of the network and click done. The next thing we're going to do is create a file inside this folder called text01 and we're just going to put some stuff in here. Save it and close. The next thing we're going to do is the same thing but on the even number computer. We're going to create a folder in the C drive called folder 02. And we're going to share this folder. Type in the credentials of the administrator. And click done. New text document. And we're going to put some stuff in here too. And we're going to save that. The next thing we're going to do is set up the share permissions and the NTFS permissions for both shared folders. So we're going to right click and go to properties and go to the sharing tab. And to configure the sharing permissions we're going to click advanced sharing and type in the credentials for the administrator. And for the sharing permissions we're going to allow full control to lab 6 group 1 and to lab 6 group 2 as well. We're going to give these both full control because after this we're going to set the NTFS permissions and that is when it really comes into play. When we click security tab we're going to click edit and we're going to add in the two groups. On the odd number computer group one is only going to be allowed to have read permissions. So we're going to apply that and for group 2 they're going to be able to read and modify. So that's it for sharing and NTFS permissions on the odd number computer. Next we're going to do the same thing for the even number computer for folder 2. And again we're going to add And for the NTFS permissions, again, we're going to allow full control for both groups. Next, we're going to go to the security tab, and we're going to add in both groups again. Only on the even number computer, group 1 is going to be allowed to have modify permissions and group 2 is going to be only allowed to read. So that wraps it up for the sharing and NTFS permissions. So next we're going to prove that the permissions are working and on the even number computer we're going to go to network and click on the odd number computer and click on the folder share we created for the odd number computer and open up the text file that we created. Now if we add in more text to the file and try to save it we see that we are allowed to save. But if we click on the even numbered computer's folder share that we created and open up the text file for even number computer and we try to add more things to it and save it, you see that we're not allowed to. And if we go to the odd number computer logged in as the user one that we created for the odd numbered group and we open up the even number computers folder share we see that we're allowed to add things to it and save but if we open up the odd number computers folder share and open the file and try to save to it we see that we're not allowed to do that as well the next thing we're going to do is configure a DFS namespace. To get started with that, we're going to open up the administrative tools and click on DFS management. In the namespaces, we want to right click and click new namespace. 
and for the server we're going to enter the server of that's going to host the namespace which is going to be the workstation one click OK next here we're going to name the namespace and we're just going to name it lab6 namespace click next it's going to be a domain based namespace and we're going to click next and click create after the namespace is completed we're going to right click on it and click new folder and we're going to add the folders that we want in the namespace so we're going to click browse on the first server we're going to click the DSFS folder one that I created and click OK and we're just going to name it the same name of the folder and click OK the next folder that we're going to add is the same shared folder but from the even number server so we're going to click browse and go to advanced and click on the even number computer and select the DFS folder 2 that we created we're going to name that DFS folder 2 click OK now that you see that we have both folders created in the namespace we're going to check and make sure that the namespace is working we're going to click on network and open up the workstation 1 through the network and click on the namespace that we created and you see both shortcuts to the folders that we shared if we click on folder 2 you see that we have text 2 that we created from the server 2 and if we click on the folder 1 we see that we have text 1 that we created on the odd number computer. The next thing we're going to do is create a DFS replication for those two folders. So to do that we're going to go into the same snap-in DFS management and we're going to click on replication and click on new replication group. This is going to be a multi-purpose replication group so we're going to click next. We're going to name the group replication lab 6 and click next. Actually maybe if we spell it right replication lab 6 click next and we're going to add both the servers that are going to be replicated across server 1 and we're going to add server 2 as well once both servers are added we want to click next on the topology selection we want to select full mesh and click next full bandwidth and replicate continuously using selected bandwidth and the primary member is going to be the odd number server click next on the replicated folders we want to add both the folders that we created so we're going to go on the C and we want to point to the folder not the folder share in the namespace so we're going to select the DFS folder 1 and as you can see it's on use existing permissions which should be full control from the NTFS permissions and we want to click next the local path of the DFS folder on the other members this is where we want to replicate the contents of DFS folder 1 2 on the even number computer so we're just going to create a new path which is going to be we're going to keep it simple and replicate it to the desktop of the even number computer we want to click OK and click OK and click Next. We want to create. Once the replication group was created, we want to click Close. And this message just tells us that there's going to be some latency before the group replicates the contents from the, e the odd number computer to the even number computer. So we're just going to click OK. The next thing we want to do is add new replicated folders. And what this is going to do is add the DFS folder 2 from the even number computer and replicate it to the desktop of the odd number computer. So this time the primary member is going to be the even number workstation. We want to click next and we're going to add the folder that we created and click OK. Click next and we're going to enable it to replicate to the desktop of the odd number computer and click OK and click OK click next and create and when we close we see that we have two replicated folders the one is the DFS folder 1 replicating to the desktop of the even number computer and the second one is DFS folder 2 and it's replicating to the desktop of my odd number computer right here what we want to do next is log both computers off 
And after a few minutes of waiting, finally the text 2 replicates to the odd number computer. And you see on the even number computer, the text 1 is replicated from the odd number computer. So that wraps up my video for Lab 6, configuring and managing file sharing, configuring a DFS namespace, and configuring DFS replication. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.